Alright, welcome back. We're going over the Customers tab in this training video. And there's a lot of information on this tab in this section. And so we'll just get right into it. This first sub-tab is the All Customers sub-tab. And this takes you to your customer list. And this is where a lot of the information is. We're going to come back to this here in a minute. Uh, before we do that, I want to show you some of these other sub-tabs. The Retail Sell sub-tab takes you to a little page that tells you your products that you're selling at your facility. And you add these in yourself. So this could be like disks, locks, uh, boxes, things like that. And then from here, you can change the inventory. So if you get more inventory, this will kind of keep track of of your inventory and let you know if you need to order more or kind of where you stand with things. You can edit these and the, and you can add a product. And so whatever you add here is going to show up on the tenant page and I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, and then you can also add fees from this button here too. So kind of manage the different fees that you might add. The next sub tab is the new quote sub tab. And this is just a really basic feature that just gives someone a quote. So we won't go over it too much but it's just you just come in here and kind of put in the parameters for the unit that they're wanting to rent and then you could print that out and give that to them or just tell them the price. The reservation sub tab is just a report that tells you the active reservations of some of the tenants that are maybe wanting to reserve people that actively have a reservation that are going to move in and what their move-in date is and their price some details there. Next we have the new customer sub tab. So on this new customer page you're only required to put the name field in here and you can save just a tenant's name and that's it but obviously you're gonna probably want as much information as you can get. And so there's contact information, there's login information, this is optional, personal information, alternate contact, and miscellaneous and there's a sub tab we'll show you here in a minute that you can add more fields to this section if you'd like to and you can even make those required for the tenant on their side to, to enter in and then lastly there's a notes area and there's two different notes there's an invoice note and a notes for the customer the invoice note would show up on the invoices for the customer if you're going to print that so maybe you want every every month you want a specific message to come up for that tenant on their invoice you can put that here and then this note section is just internally for you as managers or as owners to use and it shows up on the top of their customer page and that's how you enter in a customer the next sub tab is import customers you won't really need to know this sub tab because this is what we use to import your customer list if you're coming from a different software company and a lot of times we just say if you're here in the beginning trying to get your customers entered in the software just send us a list either in Excel or a Word hopefully in Excel and then we can get that in there a little bit easier if it's in Excel but um, if you send it to us we'll get it imported for you uh, and then lastly the sub tab is the field settings sub tab this is what I was talking about where you can add more fields in that miscellaneous section and then you can make them required right here on sign up so that means when the tenant is renting a unit online when they're creating their profile they're required information in that field that you create so this is just a quick tool to get more information when people are signing up online alright so now we're gonna go back to that customer list that we were looking at in the very beginning and so this is where you're probably gonna be spending most of your time in the software as a manager as an owner is, is on customers accounts and on their pages looking at their information making payments things like that so we're gonna run through some of the different things you can do just before we click on a name here just at the top there's a filter so you can search different things like name phone address email also there's all this really handy search tool up here where you can search customers or unit numbers and this will always stay up here no matter what tab you're on or what sub tab you're on alright so we're just gonna click on a customer here Abe Lincoln alright so we're on Abe Lincoln's page right now and there's a row of these blue buttons here at the top that you can see we're gonna go through these in a minute but this is kind of all the things that you can do for this tenant on this page. Um, before we do that, I want to show you a quick snapshot of this page. So right here you have a photo where you can add a photo or files. You can upload like uh, PDFs and things like that here. You have the customer information here that shows kind of just all their information. You can even hit extended information. Uh, it has an edit profile button which is the same as this button we'll talk about in a minute. And then it also has notification preferences. 
and this notification preferences tells you all the notifications that are set up for this specific tenant. So there's a, another video we'll show you that will help navigate to the global settings for everybody. But if you wanted to change it just for this tenant, you could come here and maybe they call in and they say, hey, I don't want text messages anymore. You could come in here and hit edit notification preferences and turn all those text messages off. Uh, also on this page, you have a little area that shows their balance and if they have a credit. So next as we scroll down you have a rentals area that shows the active rentals that they have, uh, which units they're in, their move-in date, what their price is and what their cycle is. So $300 every six months is what this one means. If they've paid a deposit, uh, their next bill date, if they have insurance, and then a move out button. Then there's a button to see past rentals here if they have any past rentals and then their agreement. Below that we have the billing history which shows just their charges and their payments and their running balance. Um, and then there's a full history button which will go back even further in the past. Next on this page is another notes section where you can add more notes for this tenant page. And then lastly there's two buttons that are really useful. A notifications button and this will tell you any notifications that have already been sent to this tenant and it will also tell you if they've opened it, if it's been delivered. It will keep a copy of the text message and a copy of the email so you can read it. I didn't click on this one on this button because this tenant doesn't have any notifications, but I will show you the tenant alterations. This button will keep track of any changes made to this tenant. So it will tell you what date it's been changed, um, what has been changed, and then who did it, which manager login did it. All right, so now to go over these blue buttons really quick up at the top. So reoccurring billing is just to get them set up on a reoccurring payment. And you can even offset the date. So maybe they're due on the first of every month, but they don't want it to come out of their card until like the third. You can offset that there. The next button is the add a credit button. That's simple, it just adds a credit to their account. Same thing with fee slash products. If you click on that, you can add a fee or a product and that's what we were looking at with that inventory sub tab a minute ago. Uh, make a payment is just a quick make a payment tool. You can either do it with a prepayment right here or just a normal make a payment button. And we'll talk about that in some other videos, the differences there. Next is edit profile. That's where you could assign them a username or password or change anything with their profile. Rent a unit. Maybe we'll click on this one here because there's a lot of uh, buttons on this page. But basically it's just renting them a new unit. So you would select the unit type, the unit, start date for billing cycle. This tells the software when they're going to be charged each month. And so this one's pretty important. But uh, like if they were due on the first of the month, let's say, uh, if you put November 1st, uh, right now it's the 8th of November, why I'm making this video. If we put uh, November 1st, it's not going to bill them in the past. So just keep that in mind. This date never invoices in for the past. The software is not smart enough to do that. So if you're, if you're putting like November 1st, but it's in the past and you still want an invoice for November, then the best way to do that is keep that November 1st, but to charge a fee and we can call it rent for the first month so we can add a fee. Some of the other buttons on this page is the plan so which plan you're going to charge them you can do a custom plan um, so that's just your monthly price you're going to be charging them. If you want to charge them a deposit, if you want to charge them an admin fee, this is called test fee because it's on our demo site, people are playing with it. Add another fee, add a product, pro rating options, uh, move in date, and then tax rate. So these are, there's a lot of settings here, but the important part is to remember uh, the start date for billing cycle to set that up correctly. And then look at the breakdown down here at the bottom that kind of gives you a breakdown of what's gonna happen when you hit rent now. So when we hit rent now, it's gonna charge them a deposit, a fee, a rent fee, and the t this is a total due right now. And then every month starting on the first of the month, it's gonna charge them $53.90. So we'll just hit rent now. And that's how you rent a unit. The next one is reserve a unit, which is really similar to rent a unit, but just not as many buttons because you, all you're doing is reserving a unit. Next is letters, which will allow you to email or print a letter for the tenant. And then gate access, which will allow you to give them a gate code or lock them out. That's a lot of information, so if you don't remember everything, just give us a call and we'll help you walk through it, especially here in the beginning. But let us know if you have any questions. That's everything under the Customers tab. Uh, next, we'll be going over the Reports tab. Thanks.